Hey, what's up, guys, and welcome back to Anime King 2. And today, I'm going to be giving you part 3 of What If Naruto Found OP Weapons and Got Godly Abilities. Part 3, guys. If you enjoy, so you want to see the other part, go ahead and comment down below and tell me on the other part, guys, and I'll be posting it as soon as possible for you guys to enjoy. And also, if you're new, I post a brand new series on this channel of What If Naruto Was Trained by a Special organization and enjoy that guys and over in making three i posted what if naruto was a genius experimenter and over in the making i post a brand new episode of what if naruto was neglected with joker personality so go ahead check out that and enjoy guys and i post a brand new episode over in making prints guys of what if naruto the op quirk in my hero academy so go ahead and check out that as well guys and if you're new, yes, I indeed have three channels. Well, four now, and making and making two and making three, and any making prints, guys. Which I post. What if I never seen a day for you guys to enjoy? So go ahead and destroy that red subscribe button and become part of the making family. So, without further ado, we need to begin this new episode. Start the intro. So the last spot we left off, both Naruto and Hinata were facing off against a guy that literally produced extreme amount of flames. He was a missing in from the hidden stone. As Naruto and Hinata were having a hard time fighting the guy, he was at least Joni level as they clashed against him. Hinata was able to steal herself as she got over her shyness because she didn't want anything to happen to Naruto. As Naruto utilized his new techniques, as he was able to slice the man hand off, but that just seemed to anger him even more as that caused him to go on a rampage. As he was about to hurt Inata and Naruto lost it. He refused to let this man hurt her as Naruto lost himself in rage and jumped right into the crook of things. The man clashed with Naruto but once the smoke and dust clear Naruto had a nasty burn across his stomach but the man was badly injured as Naruto used his shadows to restrict the man on the ground and suck every single ounce of chakra out of him. Hinata rushed Naruto's aid almost instantaneously as she got to apply the cream to his wounds and then she bandaged him up as he started healing underneath that. Kurodai flashed towards the location as she checked over the two of them. Seeing that they were fine, they made their way back towards the others. Sasuke was beyond jealous when he heard that Naruto had faced off against a Joni Eleven named Gen 1 and especially with someone like Hinata as well as he was supposed to be defeating a strong opponent. If he couldn't defeat them now, how would he defeat Itachi? It was really starting to anger him. Kakashi was in deep thought though. The guy with the silver hair told him that. His leader just sent him to come and have a checkup on the Jinjulke. And he fled after that. Because he was basically immortal and could not die. No, that was concerning. Check up on the Jinjulke, which leader? Because what in the hell was going on? They returned back to the village. As they brought in the bounties. While Kakashi went to speak to Hiruzen about what he learned. They needed someone to catch in the bounty so they went to Hayashi. Hayashi was surprised to hear about his daughter's accomplishments. As he actually praised her. Something that Hinata couldn't believe. And not to mention she was not stuttering so much. Going through the life and death situation actually had a huge impact on her. And one that she would come to understand very soon. So with that, some time passed. As Naruto felt himself being watched, but he chose to ignore them as it was kind of harming his gang. They ended up bumping into conquering the others as Naruto met the Sand siblings. Garu wanted to know him as he found something interested within Naruto. Sakura was still her usual, annoying self believing that Sasuke was better as Sasuke was getting more and more jealous seeing that Naruto was rising so much. So with that, they got ready as they made their way towards the exams. Arriving there, Sasuke challenged Rock Lee and he lost badly. Well, Lee challenged him, but he accepted the challenge even though Naruto told him that he would get his ass kicked. But Sasuke believed that he was a great almighty Uchiha, stronger than every other kid in his generation. 
but Lee put him in his place though. So with that, they took the first part of the test as they went through. Making through the first part as Naruto utilized his shadow technique as that caught Shikamaru attention. He remembered what that Kabuta guy said not to mention Naruto was noticed in the bingo book as Naruto was shot that his name was even in there. It turns out that someone had noticed a battle between them and they missed the name from the hidden stone and write down the recordings of what they had seen. Now that was a shocker as Naruto never see anyone there. However, it seems that more people know about him now. But Ibiki did notice something though. The participants for the exam was much more than he had expected or anticipated, not to mention the Kumo ninjas seem they were a bit more advanced than the others. Something was up with these Kumo ninjas and from what they were able to gather, there was two Jinjulkis in this exam and that does not include Naruto Uzumaki. So it wasn't only San Jinjulki here, there was another one. Most likely the one from Kumo. So that is something I had to keep an eye on. But something didn't seem right. However, the group passed on to the second phase as they made their way as Uncle introduced herself. As she was going to bring them towards the forest of death. So yeah guys, the base class left off, you guys can switch across the playstation of yourself and also don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs over on other channels. And yeah, without further ado, what is to be jump right in this new episode. Begin now guys. Hinata was slowly following her team to the forest of death. As they were making their way towards the entrance. As she was thinking how she almost ruined the exam for them. I should have known that it was a trick if it wasn't for Narutagun. I would have given up. So lost in her thoughts she did not even notice. Hinata, she heep. As Naruto appeared beside her. Narutakan, why aren't you with your team? She asked. Well, I wanted to make sure that you were okay, said Naruto. Oh, I'm okay, she said. I was just so afraid of risking my teammates. I would gladly risk my life, but I would not risk theirs for my own selfish reasons. I know you would, said Naruto. And that is why I couldn't let you do that to yourself. As he placed a hand on her shoulder, completely oblivious to what that was doing to her. You're one of my very important people, said Naruto. Hopefully, you won't have to make such a choice. As Hinata was able to control herself though, she took a deep breath. You're one of the most important people in my life as well, Naruto, she said. As those words hit Naruto a bit deeper than he expected. As a small blush came on his cheek with a smile, as he felt so nice. Unknown to the both of them, the Kumo team was watching them, like a hawk stalking their prey. So the mission is to kill the container for the Ichibai and kidnap the Hayuga then. A tan skinned man asks. Yes, the right Kage has requested for him to be killed due to him killing three teams of Jenin three months ago. We will worry about the Hayuga after we had killed him. I was given a seal that will transport her to a team outside of Kanoha. A teenage girl spoke up with blonde hair. Hey, that boy she's talking to looks really familiar. Another blonde teen said, he kind of does but it doesn't matter. Our mission is to kill Gar of the Desert and capture the Hayuga here. The blonde girl said, why do we need the help of the other Jenny teams? The three of us are tuning. Weren't the rest of them just getting away? We were ordered to have them assist us in the mission. They will be around in case any other team decide to interrupt our mission. The girl explained. Okay, I understand you Jito, the blonde said. As they stopped talking, up to the front of the group, Sakura looked back. She then turned back towards Sasuke. Sasuke-kun, what do you think Hinata and Naruto are talking about? I have no idea, he said. Sakura figured that he wouldn't say anything else after that, however, she was shocked when he spoke once again. Sakura, is Naruto stronger than me? Sakura wanted to say hell no and cheer him on as usual, but something caught her hesitating. And she hated that she hesitated. Well, um, you are Sasuke, she said. And you are still the rookie of the year. I know that Naruto is stronger now, but he is still the same dope, she said. However, Sasuke was going through an internal turmoil. Unaware to any of his teammates. I don't know what to think anymore. He's stronger than me now. I've always wanted to be stronger to kill that man, but now. Naruto was able to get so strong in such a short amount of time. Maybe I need some... Help, Sasuke said, as he glanced towards the blonde. Okay, maggot, said Anko. This is the force of death, as she gestured towards the gates that had several warning signs on them. Each team will receive either a heaven or a scroll. Your goal is to obtain the opposite scroll that you possess. 
What happens if we open one of the scrolls, one of the Jenny's acts? That is strongly advised against, but if you want to, you can do that at your own risk. So this is the first of death, said Naruto speaking out loud. Doesn't look too bad, he said. A kunai was launched towards him, as Uncle flashed behind him. The brave ones are always the first to die. Yeah, you're right about that. Poof, he was gone. As Uncle glanced behind her, here's her kunai, he said. Hmm, not bad. But sneak up on me again, and I'll kill you, she said. Yeah, sure, said Naruto. As he gave her an awkward smile. Okay, brats. One person from each team come and get your scroll. Then we will have a 30 minute rest before the second exam. Hey, wait. What are we supposed to do for food, said Choji? You're ninjas. Hunt something down, Uncle said. 30 minutes later, all of them were ready. Each of them had a reason for being there. Some were there to prove themselves their pride, or some of them, fulfilling their orders by their superior. Yet all of them would be unprepared for the horrors of the forest. Strangely enough, Sasuke had given Naruto leadership for this part of the exam. As Naruto stopped them, why do we stop, Sakura asks. We need to discuss the strategy and know that we're in here. We can either go to the tower and ambush other teams, or we can hunt weaker teams down, said Naruto. I say we try to find another team. That way the competition has a better chance of being weaker, said Sasuke. Okay, that sounds good. Now we have to deal with a certain mole in the trees said Naruto. Sasuke nodded as Sakura was confused. Crap, did they notice me? Thought a shinobi in a yellow jumpsuit. He was right as he had to jump away, avoiding a cluster of kunais thrown towards him. So your kids were able to notice me, huh? Well, it doesn't matter. Hand over your scroll before you get hurt. You think you can take us? It's three of us and one of you, said Naruto. Well, let me show you how class you truly are, the shinobi said, as he threw three shurikens at each of them. Doubt it. The shinobi eyes widened as Sasuke was behind him and kicked him in the back. He slammed right into a tree. He quickly jumped away avoiding the barrage once again. Surrender or we will kill you Sasuke said. Never he said as he started to go through hand signs until he paused. Huh it really worked. I guess I can do so much Chikamaru moves. The ninja was unable to move as Naruto's shadow had connected with his. What is that Sasuke said looking towards Naruto confused. Never seen him do that before. Well, it turns out I have an Infinity 4. Shadow Jutsu like the Nara's, but mine is much, much more dense. This enables much more better control than Shadow, but there's a massive Chakra Jane. What? I thought you were an orphan, Sasuke said. Shot that he had a Kiki Inkai. I am an orphan, said Naruto. My Jutsus are just similar. My Infinity allow me to do things that no other Nara can do. Damn you, let me go! The Rain Ninja said. No. Now, do you have your scroll? You think I would be stupid enough to leave my team and move off this scroll by myself? Huh, good point. Sasuke, kill him, said Naruto. As Sasuke slit the ninja throat, the Sakura horror. Huh, how can you two just kill like that, she said, in complete shock. Easily, despite me and Sasuke hating one another, we know what it takes to survive in the ninja world. Unlike you, not once have you ever tried to get stronger. And if you don't wise up soon, you will die, said Naruto. As Sakura looked down, she didn't know what to say. I don't hate you, Sasuke said softly. What? said Naruto picking up on what he said. I said I don't hate you. Sasuke mumbled something. As Naruto was barely able to make out a part. Did you just say that you were jealous of me? said Naruto. Sasuke looked away, clenching his fists. Naruto heard the word jealous and you. After he said I don't hate you. So he assumed that is what Sasuke said. As Naruto was confused, why would you be jealous of me? You're getting stronger and stronger, and I'm staying at the same level. And everyone seemed to like you, Sasuke said. As Naruto started to laugh, he found that really funny. You think everyone liked me? How can you say that when 70% of the council is kissing the ground that you walk on? 90% of the village would love for you just to talk to them. Not to mention, you're known as a prodigy. If anyone should be jealous, it should be me, said Naruto. Sasuke was about to retort until Naruto continued. I am hated by most of the populace of the village because of something I have no control over. It wasn't until this year that I started to get stronger that was protect my precious people and my teammates. Yeah, you guys included, said Naruto. I wasn't taught at an early age like you were, and I don't know what it feels like to lose my family. 
because I never really had one. They both died and Dia was born, said Naruto. Sasuke was now looking away in shock, who could have known that? His life was just as hard as his own. I know about your brother, said Naruto. What he did that night to you, and all of the other Uchiha's. After I found out that I was planning on being your friend but, you shut everyone out. If you can let go of your hatred you can see that, you're not alone in your quest for vengeance. Because I know for certain that the entire village would help you kill that bastard. I am the only one, Sasuke said. I have to be the one to kill him, to get revenge for the Uchiha's. Why does it have to be you? Let alone why do you have to do it all by yourself? If you can just source out and ask for help, your chances will skyrocket greatly. Why? said Sasuke. Why are you helping me now? You know, said Naruto as he looked up. Revenge is a way to go, yes, but going down that path means you will fall into darkness. Strange enough, the both of us are similar in some ways, but in another way, a lot different. I too had felt that burning desire to go down a path that might lead to a different outcome, but I guess I didn't make that sense of injustice and revenge consume me. And I can see it now. If you keep on going on this path, you will just get consumed. And no one will be able to save you from yourself. So what should I do? I should just let my revenge go? I... No, I can't do that, Sasuke said. His mind was conflicted by these thoughts. You don't have to decide for now, said Naruto. For now. Let's just put the past behind us and look towards the future. As Naruto held out his hand. Sasuke looked at the hand. As he was feeling uncertain as he looked towards it. However, there was this urge that pushed him forward as he took it. Deal, he said. As it caused Naruto to smile. A small smile actually came on Sasuke's face as well. Now let's go and find that scroll, said Naruto. As he moved back to the trees. Sasuke was smiling. Which is a rare sight. Sakura was looking a bit dejected but... She was more determined that she would prove to them that she was strong. Meanwhile that was going on, damn that monkey, thought a pissed off Uruchimaru as he jumped to dodge several shurikens that came towards him. Uruchimaru tried to infiltrate the exams however, he got caught by a patrol of Anvus. As the six Anvus were now after him to kill him, Uruchimaru did not want Hiruzen to know that he was here and he couldn't really fight the Anvus without alerting his presence. Or he was not even sure if they had sent for help or backup already, which they would do as a normal protocol, so this was bad. He might not get the Sharingan today, but in the invasion he will get the Uchiha, as he ran past the walls of Kanoha leaving the village, plotting in his mind. Meanwhile, Hinata was downright scared. Her team had just witnessed the sand team. Kiba and Shino was freaked out, as that sand guy that Naruto warned her about just crushed a team without any mercy. We need to leave before they notice us, Kiba whispered, as she no nod in agreement. Let's get going to Dinata. However, Gara turned his head towards the direction. Mother is not satisfied. Maybe she will be after I take their blood, he said. Teammate jumped out, knowing that they were detected. The only thing they can do right now is escape from this guy. You. You were the one with the blonde, said Gara, as he looked towards Hinata. To her teammate's surprise, she spoke up confidently. Yes, I was, she said. Naruto told me to avoid you. It's too bad you did not heed his warning, said Gara, as Sand swirled around him. Well, 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 would you look at this? Both our targets have found each other. This will be easier than I thought, a voice said from above. Both the Sand team and Team 8 looked up to see themselves surrounded by four Kumo teams. What the hell is this, said Conqueror as he pulled out his puppet. Tamari pulled her fan off her back. What the hell does Kumo want with us, said Kiba. Oh, this here is nothing. We just happened to run through the trees together and stumble upon the one Teal Jinjuliki and the Haigua girl. Then I remember that we had a mission to kill the person responsible for killing my cousin and kidnapping said Hayuga. The blonde girl said that she was clearly the leader of the group. Gara looked up towards them. It doesn't matter, he said. Mother, we'll taste all of your blood. San shot towards the girl, however. She released a ball of blue fire as she stopped it. Please, that sand of yours cannot stand up to the power of the two-tailed demon. Derwe, take the puppet user. Omoi, take the one with the fan. You three other teams, kill the two males and leave the Ayuga. The three Genin teams grinned in anticipation. Hinata, 
we can hold them off for a few minutes, but you have to run Sekiba. Ashino nodded. I won't leave you two here, she said, as she activated her Byak gun. That is illogical, said Shino. Death is a better ending than what they will do to you. I refuse to leave you two behind. I can't just let you two. Sacrifice yourself for me, she said. The two boys looked toward each other as they nodded. If that is what you wish, said Shino, then we will give it to her all. Bugs exploded out of his body. Yeah, we won't let him take you, said Kiba. Akamar jumped out of his coat and he transformed into a copy of Kiba as they started to become feral. Fangs and claws extended chakra leaking from them. You can try yell one of the Kumo Jennings as he flashed through a few hand signs. Fire style burning web! The flame split off in three directions before it split into multiple more lines shooting all over the place. Creating a web of flames off the ground that was six inches tall. Team 8 was forced separate from each other as they jumped away. As the threads came in between them, they could not use their combination skills. It was now one team versus a single Jenin and the odds did not look good as Gara was also looking towards the two teal container as Hinata prepared herself as a team jumped towards her. Meanwhile, as Naruto came to a stop, what's wrong? Said Sasuke as he looked towards him. My wrist, it's burning. Wrist is burning, Sasuke said confused. As it was a poof of smoke, Sasuke and Sakura looked at knife in wonder as they'd never seen them before. What's those? Sasuke asked confused. Sakura asked the same question as well. These are my shadow blades. They allow me greater control of my chakra when I use them. Now be quiet and let me think for a second, said Naruto. What is this feeling? I feel fear, terror, weakness, and yet determination. Someone is fighting for their life right now, but who thought Naruto? And why was he feeling it? As Naruto was unaware what he was doing, as the shadow around the ear started to get thick and tense, not his shadow but the shadows from the trees. As Naruto's mind started to conjure up a photo, like a spectral image in his mind, unaware that he was tapping into the deep recesses of his powers that he has yet to explore. It was then that Naruto was able to see everything, which was strange. Kiba, Shino and Hinata were surrounded, fighting a group of ninjas, and they were being outclassed, three on one of them each. As Naruto saw Kunai whip past Hinata's defenses, and struck her in the knee as she dropped. Both Sakura and Sasuke was just looking at Naruto, confused by the twisting emotions on his face. That was when his shadow started to get thicker and thicker before it started to lash out. The both of them stepped back as Naruto's eyes snapped open. Hinata, he said. The groan cracked as he shot off. The two of them looked in shock, but they had no choice but to follow. Meanwhile, Hinata could barely stand as five. Kumo Jenny surrounded her. She had taken out one of them, as Shino and Kiba were being stalled by the third team that was attacking them relentlessly. They were ganging up on them, switching off, switching the members overpower them even when they got the slightest chance, there was just too much of them. Gara and Yujita were duking it out causing a violent devastation in the area. Conker and Timaru were fighting a steel meet with their opponents. As Hinata was left here alone, the five of them moving towards her. Just surrender already, and we'll let your teammates go. The leader of the two teams spoke up who was attacking her. He had jet black hair and could use a vast amount of lightning techniques. He knew that he couldn't keep her too close because of her Jayugen, so he kept on blasting and not to mention, Hinata could not get too close because of his lightning. From what she could tell he was high tuning level. Two of them were low joining, and the other two were just tunings. She got back to her feet though. I'm not giving up. She had already knocked out one of the Chunin level once, because he was too cocky thinking that he could fight her, hand to hand. She was hit by a Kuna as she was favoring her right leg. I was hoping that you would say that, princess. The leader of the group said as he started to gather electricity along his hand. The four other Jenny threw Kuna in a circle around her she snapped her head around. As the ninja shouted, lightning release, scream in prison. The bolt of lightning shot towards each of the kunais as it ricocheted off the other one moving so fast. Hinata's eyes went wide as the thing slammed into her. She screamed as she could not think. She could not speak as the lightning started to shock her badly. The only thing she could see was a sick twisted grin on Jenny's face as he kept on pumping more and more chakra into the technique. I hope you like this technique it is meant to trap and incapacitate people for a long amount of time. 
Soon you'll be able to move or scream, but you'll be able to feel everything that happened to you. Hinata collapsed to the ground, unable to scream anymore. As the Kumo Ninja disabled the jutsu as he walked over towards her, he had this look in his eye. As he started to look over her body before, he reached and gripped her here as he lifted her eye level. I must say, you truly are a pretty girl, he said, as he ran his hand down her cheek. Hinata Kiba yelled as he rushed past his opponent, trying to save her. However, another ninja intercepted him as he dodged, but the second one came in and grabbed his arm before he could punch. As the first one kicked him in the stomach before, punching him right in the tree where the unconscious Akumar was. Shino Bugs came out like a storm as he washed over the area. The two ninjas were forced to leap away. However, a bolt of lightning shot him right in the chest, throwing him back as he slammed into Kiba. A barrier of lightning then erupted around them. That will keep you too busy for now, the leader said. As two of them separated and start to feed chakra into the barrier. Damn it, Shino. Are your bugs stuck in the chakra of this barrier? Yes, but it will take a while to do so, Shino said, as he grimaced in pain. Damn it, said Kiba, as he looked towards the ninja approaching Hinata once again, as he turned away from them. Hinata could not scream as he grabbed her shirt and ripped it open. My, my, he said as the other two. Make sure that the others did not notice as they were hiding. Who knows that a girl like you will have these hiding, he said. This will be more enjoyable. Before I... However, Hinata didn't hear anything else. She heard a thud. Kuroi! One of the other ninjas screamed. As Hinata was able to look up to see the ninja, who was about to do that vile thing to her. Stepping back, his throat was slit open as he tried to stop the blood flow. As Hinata saw, to her joy, Naruto standing there. He wasn't looking down, he was looking forward. I'm sorry I got here so late, he said. As he was breathing rather heavily. As. It wasn't because he was tired though. His entire body was shaking as Naruto could not control. The rage that he was feeling right now. As he looked towards her torn shirt. And the guy who was pulling on his pants a moment ago. You bastard. We're gonna kill you. One of the other ones said. Just because you killed him doesn't make you think that you're stronger than us. He always let his guard down when he's getting some ass. And you kill him. I'm gonna kill all of you, said Naruto. His tone was dark. You cocky brats. The ninja rushed forward, however. Before he could get too close, a hand shot from the shadow and tore into his midsection. As a shadow copy of Naruto rose up. Before he shoved his hand deeper. As a Kumo ninja gurgled before. The copy threw his body into a tree, lifelessly. As the ninja bleed out till he died. What the hell are those things? One of them asked. It doesn't matter. It's six of us. He can't beat us all. I will stay back and launch my jutsu on the original. Each one of them will get two of us to fight. We'll take him down. Lightning release. Bolt. As he shot a bolt of lightning to Naruto. As the three of them vanish. They rush towards the one that took over. However, another one got in his way. Now you're mine, he says. He brought his blade down, but Naruto swip. Right underneath and use his trench knife to parry to the side before he kicked the guy's leg. He then slammed his fist in the guy's skull, dropping him as he rushed towards the so-called leader, who had gathered a large amount of electricity. You think I'll go down that easily, he said. Let me show you why the Raikage has taught me one of his strongest jutsus, lightning release. Lightning armor! Naruto had to stop as lightning fluctuate all over the place, shot in random directions. The guy's body was surrounded by lightning, and he vanished. Naruto's eyes went wide as a fist slammed into his gut, throwing him back. Naruto stabbed both of his knife in the ground, stopping his momentum. As his body trembled, not because he was angry but, a sensation went through him from the punch. However, he was able to fight it off as he got back to his feet. The boy was grinning happily. Give up already, we outnumber you. Just tell me how you think you can win. Just because you have a powerful jutsu doesn't mean you're unkillable, said Naruto. Besides, the numbers are dwindling down, he said. A massive fireball rushed in the leader, and one of the other one dodged. However, one of them got swallowed in the fireball. A scream ripped through the ears, he was burned alive. Nice for you to get here, Sasuke. Sakura, go and free Shino and Kiba, and get Hinata somewhere safe. You can't help us here, said Naruto. But, no buts! Move, said Naruto! Sakura quickly bolted, hearing him yell at her. As she went to free the others. Dope, what is the plan here? 
he said he's using a Jutsu unique to new Raikage said Sasuke. You will take the two on the far left, I'll take the four on the right. My clones should be able to handle them. Personally, I want to kill this bastard for what he said about Hinata. You better be able to handle yourself team said Naruto. Just look out for yourself though Sasuke said as they split apart. The leader rushed towards Naruto. As the guy slam a fist, it burst through Naruto's body. Naruto grinned as his body started to turn into shadows. The real Naruto appeared behind him as he brought his trench knife down. However, the leader sent a surge towards his back, forced Naruto to be blasted back as he flipped. Damn it, he cursed. You can't touch me, you fool. But before I end your life, I must ask, what's your name, Leaf Scum? You know it's polite to tell your name first before asking for one, said Naruto. Besides, you're gonna die anyway. The guy laughed. Well, fine. The name is Birusu, cousin of the Raikage. The name is Naruto Uzumaki, said Naruto. Remember that in your last moments. Birusu laughed at that. As he vanished, Naruto rolled away as a fist smashed the ground where he once stood. Naruto twists as he lashed out his heel. However, when his foot made contact, the electricity shocked him as he was thrown back once again. Damn it, said Naruto as he flipped in mid-air as he landed on the tree. That's one hell of a defense. Naruto jumped away from the tree as the guy fist tore right into it. Naruto flashed through Einstein. Cage. Shadow Spear, he said. As three spears shot from the ground. From the surrounding shadows, but the lightning blocked all of them. Birusa rushed towards him his body, getting more covered in lightning. As Naruto jumped away, he had to release the weights as he flashed away. You know, this is one of the greatest fights I ever had. Too bad I'm gonna have to kill you, said Birusu. As Naruto turned to see the barrier that was holding Shino and Kiba finally gave way, but not from any external factors. He must be run out of chakra, Naruto thought. His eyes went wide as Birusu upped his lightning intake. His speed going far beyond what Naruto saw a moment ago. Birusu slammed into Naruto's shoulder first. Naruto smashed through two of the thick trees of the forest of death. His body hurling like a bullet. As Naruto's shadows dispel his blades, they spell into his seal. As he coughed up blood. You are a worthy opponent, but it's over. Birusu was shocked. And how are you able to get back to your feet? After what happened to you, you should have at least be bedridden for a few hours. Naruto looked up as he saw who he was talking to. It was Hinata. As she was in front of him. I won't let you hurt him, she said. It doesn't matter what you let me do, he said. As he stepped forward and backhanded her. Hinata crashed right where Naruto was. Hinata landed right in front of Naruto. I... Sorry, she said. As her eyes closed, Naruto started to crawl towards her. As he didn't understand why. Why wasn't she moving? Why did her eyes just close like that? No, she can't be dead, he thought to himself. He refused to believe that. Hinata, he yelled. As Birusu saw the look on Naruto's face. Huh. She should have stayed where she was. If she would have listened, she would have still been useful after all. Her prized body would have been a good possession of mine, said Birusu. As Naruto hands dropped to the ground, his head lowered. It was then it started to happen. All the fighting in the era came to a stop. Yujito and Gara, who were a distance away, both came to a stop as well. As a sinister feeling swept through the air. Both Shino and Kiba were able to witness what just happened, but they were too late. And now... A strange feeling started to dominate all of their senses. A feeling of death. A feeling of rage. A feeling of power. Red chakra surrounded Naruto. And the hand that he was holding onto. It went around Hinata's body as well. As it was also black chakra seeping from Naruto. It whipped around him and Hinata. As her body was enveloped as well. What is this? Said Kiba. As Naruto slowly got up. A tail erupted from his back as it slowly whippered behind him. As it was so hypnotic as it moved from left to right. Naruto and Karabin got covered in red chakra. His nails grew. His hair turned wild and spiky. He then looked up, his eyes red and demonic. The remaining genin stepped back in fear before he vanished. Screams could be heard as Naruto claws ripped through their throats. He snapped another one's neck before he broke another one's spine and crushed his skull. 
There was a grin on Ruka's face. A wicked, psychotic grin. Birsa looked at him. What are you? He said. Birsa was not taking any chances as he released. His power at 100%. It might not be as strong as the Raikage Lightning Armor, but it was still strong enough to arrive in front of Naruto and slam a bone-crushing fist into his jaw. Yet, the strange thing about it was, Naruto did not move. Not even an inch. Is that all, said Naruto. As a second tail came from his back, Naruto slammed his fist into Beerus' stomach. The body of Beerus shot like a bullet. Trees were overturned, earth was rooted up. The force of Naruto punch gouged out the earth. As the two tails sway behind him hypnotically, I'll kill you, he said. As he rushed forward on all fours, Beerus looked up as he saw Naruto coming towards him. He pumped out every last amount of chakra he had. This was his honor. He was gonna fight and show this Jenny all that he had. His team was dead, he was the last one alive. He wasn't even to start a fight or even show his true power here. Yet he had to because of this boy. And yet the boy was proven to be as strong as him or might even stronger. As the Naruto body started to become a more darker color, the red started to turn into black as he moved. Beerus rushed forward as Naruto grinned and leaped forward as well. The both of them smashed into each other but Beerus, entire body was overrun by Naruto's chakra as Naruto literally tore right through him as he smashed into him. Bones, blood and gore flew everywhere as the place was covered in Beerus. There was not even a full body piece of him left. Naruto turned as he blinked a few times before his eyes settled on Hinata. He slowly stepped forward as he reached out towards her. A grimace look on his face as his hand shot forward. The others looked in fear. They thought Hinata was dead. That is when the chakra from Naruto's hand shot out of his hand and covered her. Before it seemed to sink into her body, steam came from her body as Naruto collapsed down to his knees before he fell face first. They rushed over towards a group. As they looked towards the both of them, Hinata didn't even have a scratch on her. Naruto was unconscious but he was still alive. And the both of them were breathing. It was a good thing that Sakura was able to gather the scrolls that the other dead ninjas had. And with the three teams they had enough scrolls for them to pass the exam. As for Naruto, he found himself in a dark place. From what he could tell he was stuck in some ankle, high puddle of water. It must be some kind of sewer as he heard water dripping from above. Where the hell am I? said Naruto. The last thing he remember was clashing with the Birsu guy and now he was here. As he took a step further, reached out his hands, trying to find some kind of object or something in his path. As his thoughts drifted to the fight and what happened when they clash. But then you remember about Hinata. Seeing that man about to hurt Hinata, it drove him over the edge. The only thing he felt was absolute rage. Not even when Mizuki had nearly killed Aruka Sensei or when Hawk would turn Sasuke into a pincushion. Has he ever been so angry? Three times now he'd almost lost people that were close to him. Sure, Aruka was just his teacher but he was more than that. Sasuke might be a bastard but they were connected to one another by their pain that they share. However, Hinata was pure. Not to mention there was a deep pain in her eyes as well that he always saw. And he didn't know why but he completely understood it. And strangely, unlike the two of them, her thoughts were still pure. There was no thought of revenge or anger. Nothing at all. Even he had succumbed to anger in the past and yet, she was just so different. As his heart ached every time he saw those lonely, painful looking in her eyes. If it wasn't for the Haku and Zabuza mission, he wouldn't have even noticed but now that he took a step back he was able to see it all. Things that he never saw before. But he did not understand where that pain came from. It wasn't that she was an orphan. The Hayuga was one of the largest clans within Kanoha. She had friends in the academy. And not to mention Kiba and Shino were willing to put their life on the line in order to protect her. So why did she have those painful eyes? As Naruto was wrapped up in deep thoughts when he heard it. A chuckling. The laughter was so thick and tense. The first time Naruto ever experienced bloodlust was when he was up against Sabuza, but this was 
on a completely different scale. Naruto was petrified as the police felt so heavy. It felt like his lungs were burning. It felt like his eyes were being ripped out of his skull. It felt like his whole body was trying to negatively run away from this feeling. It was in that he heard it. You're nothing but a foolish child. And you lack the will to do what is necessary. To do what must be done. The voice was booming and dark as Naruto's eyes snapped around the area trying to locate the source of the voice. Who are you? said Naruto as he clenched his fists. Come out here and I'll show you how much I can do. The voice laughed once again. As if you could. You will lack the understanding of what it means to be a real ninja. And you will never understand. You will never be a real ninja despite everything you have succumbed so far. You have no idea who the hell I am, said Naruto. Why don't you say that to my face? You are weak and meaningless. If you're so strong, tell me how. You were unable to save Haku, Zabuza, or the Hayuka girl that you come to care about so much. Tell me. As Naruto lowered his head, he felt ashamed because it was true. Without the Fox Shocker, he was unable to defeat Burusu. Granted, the guy was a cousin of the Raikage, but still. He had pushed himself so hard and trained so hard he should at least be able to put up a good fight. What if he didn't have the fox? Would he have let Hinata die? Would he have watched her die in front of him? Would he have lost everything and everyone around him? Without the fox chakra, was he really? A ninja even? Was he even strong enough to protect himself or the people that he come to care about? His hands dropped to his side. Are you done? Seems you're more pathetic than I thought. Your father was twice the ninja that you are. I wonder though what's keeping you going. Why not just give up? There's nothing more left for you. As you can see, you're pathetic. Hearing that Naruto head snapped up as he smashed his face into the ground, he picked himself up. As he rises back up to his feet, why the hell does it matter to you whether I give up or not? Even if I'm not strong right now, I'll train myself until I become stronger to protect the people I love. I won't stop. I won't give up. Your stupid words cannot stop me from going forward, said Naruto. He refused to give up. He won't give up. His determination exploding inside of him like a lit candle, turning into an inferno. Laughter could be heard, but it wasn't filled with so much malice this time. It seems you're really being serious. Well then, face your inner darkness and finally, you can learn who I am and we can talk face to face. What are you talking about, said Naruto? This darkness is a representation of your soul. However, also, it's a part of your soul as well. That power that you have inside of you. It was nothing, just merely a sewer before you got your knife. But now it has changed. How did my knife change it, said Naruto? Those knife of yours contain the spirit of a great warrior, eons old, and has survived and fought more people than anyone else on this planet. It is from him that your shadow cake built has come from. He will meet you and he will decide whether or not that you are worthy of wielding his power. Where is he then? said Naruto. When do I meet this great warrior? Two red eyes snapped open in front of Naruto. His eyes went wide. You will meet him now, the thing yell. Next thing Naruto knew he was floating in a black abyss with strange stars all around. He could not feel the ground or the ear, nothing. It just felt still and empty, like he was suspended in time. Now where am I? said Naruto as he stopped. He was able to turn as he saw an orb. It was white, green, and blue. The colors mixed and intertwined with each other. Just then the orb went white. The light was intense, forced him to cover his eyes. As Naruto waited until the light died down a bit, the orb was shining a lot brighter than before. As the colors started to change, the white started to become black, the green became a turn brown, and the blue became a purple. As it seemed to be consuming the orb, like it was trying to corrode it. Is that my soul? said Naruto. No young one, this is not your soul. A new voice spoke up. The other voice was filled with hate and malice but this one, it was filled with a wisdom and Sadness as well, a lot of it. Great, another voice. Any chance that you're gonna actually show yourself? The place switched inside as Naruto landed 
on a stone road with temples on either side. Vegetation seemed to have wreaked havoc on some of the statues and temples. The place is overgrown. It seems like no one has lived here for a long while. Naruto wasn't sure what the statues were because they were not humans. They had only three fingers, elongated heads with no mouth. Where am I now? Why is this happening to me? said Naruto. As he wondered to himself, do I really deserve something like this? As he kept on walking, seeing nothing around, he arrived towards the valley, filled with nothing but vegetation. This used to be the home planet of my people, eons ago before. I even lived on your world. My people thrive on this planet, living in harmony until a discovery was made that shook it to its very core. The voice stated, One of the greatest warriors of our race discovered a way to link our minds in harmony. Many of my people rallied to his cause and the way of the Kalal was born. However, there were some that did not wish to let go of our individuality. So we were banished by our corrupted council against the wishes of our great leader. Stated the voice with much sadness. That makes no sense, said Naruto. Why would they banish you just because you want to be your own self? Yes, it never made sense. My forefathers were part of those that got banished. We went to the home world of Shakuras, which was the home world of my people. We became known as the banished ones, while our cousins were known as the power of the Kale, while we used the power of the void, in which the power of darkness and shadow manifested itself. So, you mean my shadow? They're coming from this void, said Naruto. Yes, that is exactly what I mean. The void can allow its user to see the future, become the shadow itself, and manipulate them through years of training as well. So that means the possibilities are limitless, said Naruto. Hey, who are you, he said. Yes, the possibilities of your power are limitless. Mixed with their chakra, my species, the Protoss could use a void, but... We never had enough energy to use his power. If you must know my name, it's Zeratul. So are you going to teach me to use my powers, then Ruto? I'm afraid that no one can teach you to harness the power of the void. The void call upon all beings, and you must continue to harvest it, so that it will make you stronger. I have seen your past, and the void allow me to see your future. There will be many trials, many difficulties, and if you fail, you will never reach your status that you wish to reach. Your future is one of hard work and determination. But I've seen your past. I've seen your drive to not give up. And I believe that you will make it. If you can see the future, why not just tell me, said Naruto. I'm afraid it's not my place to tell you, young one, he said. The sands of fate are always shifting as well by our decisions that we make through life. This planet is the home world of my people. My race was destined to assimilate into one mind, known as the Overmind. The place shifted once again, the sky was red. The ground was devoid of all devastation, the place looked lifeless. Massive organisms and what looked like living buildings covered the valley down below. There was a giant structure that he's never seen before in the center. In terms of height that means, it was far larger than anything within Kanoha. It seemed to have four appendages that moved around and a gigantic eye that scanned the area. Thousands of other smaller winged creatures surround it in a massive circular pillar. Naruto heard a shout as he turned to see. Thousands of horrified looking creatures charging toward a group of men in blue bulky armor. The men in the blue armor raised giant rods as they pressed something. Naruto watched the creatures were hit as they dropped to the ground screaming in pain. There was massive beasts behind the men as they made the banging noise. More of the objects shot from the tubes, Naruto wasn't sure what it was, it was too fast, as it decimated the creatures. As Naruto watched thousands of creatures fell at the hands of the projectile, but they seemed to be endless as once they died more, just appeared from the back, coming and coming and coming. The creatures are upon the man as they fought through. They started to tear off their armor and tear them apart. Naruto felt sick as he looked towards a gruesome scene. It was then at that moment three balls of blue light slammed into the center of the creatures before it exploded into a massive shower of energy. The battle had shifted as new faction joined in on the side of the men. However, these were not men, they had a different color skin and they were much larger in comparison. They wore yellow armor that had two glowing blades sticking out of the wrists. Four-legged walkers behind them were firing the blue energy balls as they moved 
they start to slaughter the creatures. The Taring and the Protoss both fighting alongside each other to rid the planet of the infestation known as the Overmind. It was driven by a single purpose to assimilate the Protoss into the Zerk so that they all could become complete. In one last gamble, the greatest Protoss ever, Executor, Tacitor, sent his flagship into a direct collision with the Overmind, said Zeratol. As Nurtle looked up to see a swarm of monsters in the sky raining down, the metal monsters turned to flame and exploded. Only one moved through all of this as he moved towards the Overmind. Nurtle watched as the entire ship became covered in a blue energy as he slammed directly into the Overmind, the gigantic statue that Nurtle saw. Right into the giant eye it hit. The creature started to swish around as Nurtle saw its four limbs moving. It was actually alive. As it broke, all three races stopped fighting. Everything returned back to darkness as Nurtle looked around. He was now in a dark corridor that was dimly lit. Why don't you throw yourself and tell me? What I need to know, Zerato, said Nurtle. Very well. As Nurtle saw the figure walk out of the darkness, he was 5 feet 9 inches, blue skin with glowing green eyes. He had armor only on his wrist where Nurtle assumed that his angel blades came from. The rest of his body was covered in a dark purple cloak that gave him this deadly appearance. Naruto Uzumaki, I have chosen you to be the successor of my people power, the Void. You will not discover everything about your powers, but if you understand the Void, it will help you, Naruto said. That battle was one of my species' greatest. Only after our leader, Tassadar, harnessed the power of the Void, was he able to kill the giant beast. The battle also taught our speeches that we were not alone in the universe against the threats. We worked aside the humans and we won the battle that day. My greatest friend after the war was finished was James Rayner, the ancestor of your race. This is all good and all, said Naruto. But what does this have to do with choosing me to have your powers? Because you're the descendant of James Rayner and only someone that possesses the light side and dark side can properly harness the power. We will talk again, but I have judged your soul, and you are indeed worthy. Wait, said Naruto, wait, as the guy stepped back into the darkness. Wait, how the hell do I get out of here, said Naruto. The room shifted back to the first room, as the two red eyes were looking at him. So you're back, human. Do you still wish to know who I am? You're the Kyubi, said Naruto. After all, who else could be in my mind? The blades are connected to Zeratol. And you're the fox inside me, right, said Naruto. You have a lot of guts for a human, but then again, you've gotten a blessing from Zeratol. We will talk again soon. It seems like you're now need outside. Naruto's eyes snapped open. He was in a dark area, not as dark as his mind. He didn't feel any pain in his body anymore, as he seemed to be in some kind of tree. Well, under the tree as he could see the roots. Just then he heard a cry of pain from outside. As Naruto picked himself up and he came across a battle, between Team 8 and his team, against the sound team, Naruto eyes lightened when he saw Hinata faced off against the girl of the sound. As that brought a smile to his face, he slammed his fist into his palm as he rushed into the battle. But guys, it'll be ends up to right here. If you want to miss more to do, like, subscribe, comment down below, turn on that bell notification so you posted. Remember, share to all your friends in the social media platform. And also, guys. Don't forget to stay in tune for the rest of the what ifs coming your way. And if you're new, yes, I indeed have four channel guys Anime King, Anime King 2, Anime King 3, and Anime King Prince, which I post what if on every single day. Yes, you heard that right, every single day for you guys enjoy. So go ahead and destroy that red subscribe button and become part of the Anime King family. And thank you for all of your help and your support. And don't forget to go ahead and check out the other what ifs. And yeah. Without further ado, I'm off and I'll see you guys soon. Peace, guys.